the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. President Trump is back in Washington this morning after making the first stop on an eight-state midterm push. I'm Laura Podesta. I'll have details on what Mr. Trump is saying to try and energize Republican voters. And millions and millions of dollars being spent by outside the state group on Montana's U.S. Senate race. Coming up, who those groups are and how that money is actually being spent. Good morning to you. Welcome to your November 1st. It is 629 here on your Thursday. President Trump kicked off a whirlwind schedule of campaign events that will send him crisscrossing the nation over the next week. He's trying to drum up Republican support leading up to those midterm elections. Democrats are doing the same, sending some of their biggest names to rebuke the president. CBS News' Laura Podesta is in New York this morning with the details. President Trump campaigned in Florida last night, his first of 11 events in eight states ahead of the midterm elections. The people of Florida are going to send Rick Scott to the United States Senate, and Ron DeSantis will be your next governor. He's keeping immigration front and center. Democrats want open borders, and they want to invite caravan after caravan into our country, which brings crime. That caravan is still weeks away from reaching the border. Earlier, President Trump said the amount of troops he's sending there may increase. We have about 5,008. We'll go up to anywhere between 10 and 15,000. Democratic heavy hitters on the campaign trail are not letting up on the president's political attacks. Trump is a pathological liar, and it really doesn't matter what he says, because that has nothing to do with his reality. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders was also in Florida yesterday campaigning for Andrew Gillum, who's running for governor against DeSantis. And former Vice President Joe Biden was in Missouri for Senator Claire McCaskill. We need people who are authentic, who don't bully or belittle other people, who treat people with dignity and respect, people who simply tell the truth. Former President Obama and Oprah Winfrey will also be out campaigning for Democrats in the next few days. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Now, President Trump is uh, mainly focused on races for Senate and Governor. He'll be in Missouri tonight, eventually hit Indiana, Montana on Saturday, West Virginia, Ohio, Tennessee, and Georgia just over the next few days. Busy, busy. Very busy swing for that. Again, Saturday, 12.30 at uh, Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport. Belgrade. Bozeman. Correct. You're it's right. In Belgrade. But in Belgrade. It's Belgrade. I, we were just saying it is. Yeah, it they super did actually as Belgrade. I thought they that did, was kind of yep. cool. Yeah, yep. that's it. Matt, uh, speaking of Next couple of Belgrade. days, yeah. How is it at the airport? <laughs> <laughs> the airport That's a smooth Belgrade, transition yeah. as I get for you. Uh, temperature's <laughs> not bad. Uh, 37 degrees in Belgrade. I supered it right you. Yeah, that's good. You. There you go. Uh, 39 in Butte, 30 degrees in West Yellowstone. A little fresh snow on the ground in West this morning. Uh, basically dealing with quiet conditions early on. We may see some patchy fog trying to develop as you head through the morning hours. Better chances of some showers late in the day. We're going to break down your complete forecast in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. Uh, now 632. There's a new development in Montana's U.S. Senate race. Libertarian Rick Breckenridge has endorsed Republican Matt Rosendale, in part because of what he and Rosendale call a, quote, illegal piece of campaign mail. Breckenridge and Rosendale made the announcement in a joint teleconference with reporters Wednesday morning. Breckenridge says he knows he can't win the race against Democratic U.S. Senator John Tester. So he said he's supporting Rosendale as the person in the race who can best advance the cause of liberty. Rosendale's campaign then alleged that Tester supporters are behind a recent mailer slamming Rosendale and promoting Breckenridge as a true conservative. They say the source of the mailer isn't identified and called it a dark money attack meant to siphon votes away from Rosendale to benefit Tester. The Tester campaign says it had nothing to do with the mailer and condemns the use of dark money. Senator Tester's campaign also noted that Rosendale has voted against attempts to regulate and disclose dark money campaign spending. And we reported earlier this week on the source of campaign donations in two of Montana's top electoral contests for this year, for U.S. Senate and for the House. But there's another, even bigger piece of campaign spending in these contests, almost entirely in the Senate race. 
MDN's chief political reporter, Mike Dennison, gives us the breakdown on the money spent so far this Montana campaign season by outside political groups. As of this week, outside groups have now spent more than $33 million on Montana's closely watched U.S. Senate contest, a new record for a single election here. Democratic incumbent John Tester's campaign has outraised Republican Matt Rosendale's campaign by $14 million, but conservative and Republican Party groups have spent almost $21 million on ads, mailers, and other activity this year to help even the playing field, supporting Rosendale or attacking Senator Tester. And that amount doesn't include the cost of President Trump and Vice President Mike Pence visiting the state a half dozen times to stump for Rosendale. Some of the big spenders on behalf of Rosendale include the National Republican Senatorial Committee at $4.7 million, Club for Growth Action at $3.7 million, the Republican Senate Leadership Fund nearly $3 million, and a pair of PACs supported by Illinois billionaire donor Richard Uline, Restoration PAC and America's PAC, which have spent $3.7 million combined. All told, 22 separate groups have spent on behalf of Rosendale. But protester groups are not sitting on the sidelines. 18 of these groups have spent almost $13 million, primarily attacking Rosendale. They include the Democratic Party groups, Senate Majority PAC and Majority Forward, who've spent a collective $6 million, environmental group the League of Conservation Voters at nearly $2 million, and a group called End Citizens United, whose goal is to oppose unlimited money in politics, but it spent $2.2 million to help Tester. Montana State University political scientist David Parker says while these groups are spending big, the monetary advantage probably still goes to Tester with his substantial campaign fund. That's because candidates' campaigns pay lower rates for broadcast ads, so their money goes further. Montana's U.S. House race between Republican Congressman Greg Gianforte and Democrat Kathleen Williams also has seen some outside spending, but only about $400,000, and most of that on behalf of Williams. And with just six days until the election, what money's left to be spent will be chasing those few undecided voters who may decide both these races. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Now, of course, you can read Mike Dennison's full report on outside spending on the congressional races on our website. Now, with just five days until Election Day, a new poll shows how close the two, uh, top two races are. A new poll from Grievous Marketing shows neck-and-neck -neck races for both the House and the Senate. In the House, it's a dead heat between incumbent Republican Greg Gianforte and Democrat Kathleen Williams. Each with 48% support, 3% of those polled say they're still undecided. In the Senate race, incumbent John Tester holds a 3% lead over Republican Matt Rosendale, 48% to 45%. Now, 32% of the 782 people polled said they've already voted. That poll has a margin of error of plus or minus 3.5%. Graves also asked about President Trump's performance in office, and it's a tale of two extremes in Montana. 43% strongly approved, 33% of those polled disapprove of the president. Meanwhile, MTN has confirmed Vice President Mike Pence will be coming to Northwest Montana next week. While specific details have not been released, the Vice President will hold a rally in Kalispell on Monday to benefit Republican Senate candidate Mike Rosendale. This will be Pence's second visit to Montana. His first visit was to Bozeman. Now, staying in Bozeman, Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport beefing up security in preparation for President Trump's visit on Saturday. President expected to arrive at the airport in the late morning. The rally expected to start at 12.30. For passengers flying in and out of Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport, you can expect about a 15-minute delay if you're arriving or departing during that time. The airport is well equipped to support Air Force One, but Airport Director Brian Springer says that his biggest concern is managing the traffic for the event. And with this event being at the east side of the airport off of Airport Road, that helps us a whole lot in separating passenger traffic uh, from the uh, event traffic. Uh, so, you know, it's one of those things though that uh, we recommend people planning extra time to get to the airport. Now, the airport parking lot will not be used for people going to President Trump's rally. And replacing a section of the road is not something that the Montana Department of Transportation does very often in the month of October. But the section of U.S. 89 north of Gardner is not your ordinary project. As our own MTN's Chet Lehman shows us, MDT replaced an entire section of the highway in just three hours. And they'll have to do it again in six months. 
Crews gathering behind me, getting ready to make a little bit of a change to uh, US 89 at the mouth of the Yankee Jim Canyon. See, the work they're doing here by the Montana Department of Transportation isn't about cars. This is about wildlife. This cattle guard is actually a bison guard. Yellowstone National Park bison roam north each year during the winter looking for food in the Gardner Valley and many of them will wander this far north. The cattle guard will keep them from getting into the road in a, the Yankee Jim Canyon and becoming a traffic hazard for cars passing back and forth throughout here throughout the winter. Very few other places will you find sections of road stacked next to the road, but that's what happens here twice a year as the Montana Department of Transportation changes from road to cattle guard then in the spring, cattle guard back to paved road. In the Yankee Jim Canyon, Chet Lehman, MTN News. Now, by the way, Chet was telling us this entire project took about three hours to complete. That's unbelievable. It was pretty cool seeing the entire uh, seven sections of a uh, road that when it's paved road, seven sections. There's uh, uh, six sections of cattle guard all stacked right along the road. And it was so just the yesterday. road is stacked next to the road, and then six months from now, it'll turn back into a road again. Fascinating. Yeah, crazy stuff. Teamwork. It was cool. Makes the dream work. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. <laughs> it is time for a quick break. Here's a sneak peek at what's coming up on Montana this morning. The candidates in Georgia's governor's race are rallying supporters ahead of one of the most polarizing elections in the country. I'm Kenneth Craig with a look at the race that's being described as a battle for the soul of the state. Good morning ahead here on CBS This Morning. We'll show you how women will make history in next week's midterm elections, both on the ballot and as voters. And... It's been 14 years since iconic singer Andrea Bocelli recorded new music. He talks to us about fame and making singing a family business. Such a beautiful song. We'll see you at 7.